Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Flower Power Live. Today is October 18th, and so I have to start off by saying happy birthday to me. Today's my birthday, but I wanted to be here with you because I just love sharing my plant wisdom with you. My name is Allison from The Well Cultivated Life. And tonight I'm going to be doing kind of a short show because I'm running a whole other program this week, a virtual retreat. And so I thought this time of year is when things are shutting down and out in the garden, things are starting to go to bed, things, plants are starting to go to bed for the winter. And so this time of year is one of the most important times to begin collecting seed for next year. And in order to collect seed, we really have to plan in advance because when we collect seed from a plant, we're not collecting it at the same stage of development that we would be collecting it if we were to eat it or if it was an herb or if it was a cut flower or something like that. So it's really important to plan ahead when you want to save seed. Now, that said, you may not have already made plans to save seed this year, but I wanted to give you some tips so you can start thinking about it for the future. Saving our seed is extremely important. Right now, we're at a point where much of the seed diversity has been lost, much of the seed is being shall we say, commandeered, trademarked, and um, patented, and things like that. And so <clears throat> the seed that we have left, the wild seed, the open pollinated seed, and the um, free seeds, basically, it's so important for everyone to, to do their part to save seed so that we can keep seed available for the people and not for the corporations or other groups. I'm not going to get into too much of the politics right now, but if you, um, if you love to grow a garden, you should definitely be paying attention to what's going on with seeds. Now, speaking of gardens, one of the things about seeds and about gardeners, I should say, <clears throat> and one of the reasons why we often don't save seeds is because a garden is completely the opposite of the wild. In nature, in ecology, a plant grows through its whole life cycle and we go, can go out at any time and see plants in different stages of development from flowering to fruiting to full seed release and dispersing their seed out for the next year. Now in our garden, especially any kind of formal garden, we're always taught, oh, prune off the deadheads, make sure you don't have any ugly brown stalks sticking up in your garden. And so by doing that, we are now cutting off the whole life cycle at the point where the plants might develop seeds for themselves. So it takes a little bit different mindset as a gardener to be able to allow some of your plants to continue growing past the point of their beautiful blooms, or as a vegetable gardener, to allow plants to stay out in the garden past the point of where you would want to eat it. If I'm harvesting a um, cucumber, for example, we want it small and green before any seeds really start to develop on the inside. But if I want the seeds, not only do I have to let it get big and green, I have to let it get almost to the point of brown and even almost ready to rot. And at that point, that would be the natural stage when the cucumber would release all of its seeds. It would just kind of rot into the flesh and it would be carried away by rodents most likely. And some of it would fall into the ground and that's how it would re-sprout again for the next year after the uh, flesh rotted away. So it's like I said, it takes some forethought to save 
seeds. Now, one of the things I brought in today was I wanted to show you kind of this idea here with some fennel plants that I have. And so hopefully you can get a good picture. Let me hold them up against my white shirt. Um, so this fennel here, I brought some in in all different stages of ripeness. I'll probably post some pictures down below because it's gonna be really hard to see. So here I've got a fennel flower. This is from a bronze fennel and it's just finished flowering. And you can see that the flowers itself or the, the seeds are just starting to set, but it's still green. And not only is it green, but the whole stalk is still green. At the next stage of ripeness, the fennel turns, begins to turn brown. Here we can see some of the seeds are brown and some of them are still slightly almost bluish colored. But the stalk itself and even these little parts of the umbel are also still green. So even though we could harvest those if we wanted for, for to eat, they would not be viable for, for creating seed. Now here is another stalk here. And again, these are now starting to turn brown and fill out. And if I looked at just at the seed, I would be harvesting this. I could harvest this for herbal use. Fennel makes a great, um, I'll have to do a show on fennel one of these times in the near future. Um, it's great for tea. It's good for um, digestive um, use. And you can see that the stalk is still green. So until my top has completely dried up and my stalk is completely brown as this one here is, the seeds themselves, even though you could harvest them for, um, for an herb, they may not, well, fennel probably would, but some seeds, if you do not allow them to ripen enough, they just won't sprout the next year. They have not fully developed. So looking for on these more um, vegetative type of plants, looking for not just the seed head to look right, but the stalk that is holding the seed head for that to turn brown or look, start to look dried up is definitely a good indication that it's ready to harvest for seed. Now, one of the things you have to be careful of, of course, is if I wait too long, I get a seed head that looks like this, where there's no seed left on it at all because I waited too long to go out and collect the seed. So it's definitely something where you're going out to the garden and you're checking it every day or you're watching a patch of wild um, plants that you might be um, tending or caring for and watching them every day to see when they're ready to collect their seed. So there's a lot of information out there about seed saving and I hope you'll consider doing it for next year. Now, one of the um, really important things about seed is that seed itself is life. The entire seed has life in it. And so many cultures have a very um, strong reverence for seeds because they realize that without seed, there is no life. And I wanted to share this quote with you. It says, it's a Mohawk proverb, and it says, we do not own the seeds, we borrow them from our children. So when we think about seeds, we must respect them. And this is why it gets a little upsetting when people start taking ownership of the seed, which is life, which is our ability to live, which is our ability to eat, our ability to sustain, sustain ourselves. Um, and I wanted to read, you know, I like to draw a card for all of my shows, but since I wasn't doing a specific plant, I drew a card from this um, Akashic Oracle deck, which I haven't used in a while. And she, um, I decided to actually pick a card that I felt fit the best with this idea of the seeds as our ancestors, the seeds bringing life forward from generation to generation. And so this card is called, ain't, I'll hold it up like this. It even has a little seed, almost a little seed look right here and a little seed sprinkled about. 
ancient ones. And it says, the ancient ones sing to us in our dreams. Perhaps you have heard them calling. In the shadows, they whisper their stories, passing their wisdom on to those that stop and listen. They share tools for personal and planetary healing. The ancient ones, the ancient seeds, are dancing, spirit bodies moving with the earth and swaying with the trees. They are calling you to joy, asking you to live in wonder and walk in peace. Living in wonder and living in awe of the miracle of a seed. So this week, take some time to think about and connect with a plant or a seed that's growing near you. And maybe go out and collect some beautiful seed heads. Even though the um, season has pretty much winding down, there's still a lot of incredibly gorgeous and decorative seed stalks and seed heads. Even things like um, daylilies have these beautiful seed heads on them. So maybe go out and collect some seeds, bring those inside and just appreciate the incredible, amazing life that a seed represents. So that's all I have to share with you tonight. You can follow me on Instagram at Cultivate My Life to see what I'm up to. And until Next week, get out there, look for some seeds, and have a great week, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.